今天就是跟大家讲，前面是两部分的这个介绍，一个是关于 c o n o s 还有一个是就刚才你从研究市场的角度来介绍一下。呃，然后呢，现在也可以大家就是根据就是之前这个差不多一个小时我们的介绍，有任何的问题，可以就是像我们的 n e o 也好，或者我们其他的团员啊提问，无论是就是整个就是市场方面的也好，还是技术方面的，我们都非常的呃开心能够和大家一起分享和交流，好吗？然后大家有什么问题都可以积极的跟我们这个问答都可以。你好，我想问一下右先生，嗯，我刚才听到您演讲，嗯，介绍了 c r o n o s 目前已经有一千多家的企业会员了。我想，我的问题是，呃，这么长时间的中国企业都没有加入进来，您觉得最大的问题是什么？还有就是，呃，今年之后您是呃用哪些方法吸引？My question is、uh, for Neil.、Uh, in your presentation, you mentioned that、uh, Chronos Group has attracted more than one thousand members already, but、uh, no Chinese、uh, members、uh, have been yet found in this group. So, what's the root cause for these、uh, phenomena? Also, starting from this year, what kind of measures are you going to take to attract、uh, more companies from China to become members of our Chronos Group? So thank you. Yes, that's a great question. Thank you very much. So, there are two two probable reasons why we don't have Chinese、uh, companies as members so far. 我首先来说呢，呃，有两大原因呢，我们没有看到什么这个中国公司成为我们的成员公司。The first is that Kronos needs to、uh, Spend more effort and time communicating with the Chinese industry to the benefits of participation in Kronos, which is why we're here this week. 一呢，我认为呢是 Kronos Group 呢，他没有花足够的时间来跟中国公司做沟通，让他们知道呢参与到这个标准化制定规范的制定过程当中的好处。这就是为什么我们今天来到这里，是希望能够增强这方面的沟通。And I think particularly we need to communicate to the leading companies and players in the industry. And the decision makers inside those companies as to the benefit of Kronos participation, and、uh, that is, I think, the key step that we、um, need to work harder on, and that's what we're going to be working on harder on for the next few years. 在这个沟通过程当中呢，我们相信呢，我们应该强调呢，这个关注中国的领先公司以及这些领先公司当中的决策者。那么，这就是呢，我们从今年开始呢，要致力。这个非常要要花很大的力气去做的，我们认为呢，这会是一个关键的一步。Also, Kronos needs the help of the press to get its message out to China.、Mm-hmm. 但是我们仅仅是直接去找这些中国的领先公司啊，或者他们的决策者还是不够的。我们觉得媒体呢，在这方面呢，也是扮演了一个重要的角色。他们能够起到非常大的帮助作用，使得这么重大的信息呢，能够广为人知，能够让更多的中国公司知道。We think it's good timing. We think that Kronos is now、um, strong enough and large enough, and the Chinese industry in the mobile space is also strong enough in the global market. Uh, that we have strong kernels and strong Chinese industry. The time has come. The time is right for us to collaborate. 而且呢，我觉得目前的时机来说呢，也是再恰当不过了。一方面呢 ，Kronos Group 它所推出的这些 API 的这个这些标准呢，是已经足够的强大。那么我们的规模呢，也是变得非常大了。而中国的移动产业呢，现在也是变得非常强大了。他们正在呢做好摩拳擦掌的做好呢这个全球化的准备。啊，瞄准全球化的市场，因此呢，这样一个两强加起来，我觉得现在是最好的时机。Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to do two two things.、Uh, we are going to have general outreach and education in the Chinese、uh, industry, like、uh, events like this, so people understand who Kronos is. 所以说呢，我们计划当中呢有两个重点，一个呢就是呢我们要做一些教育的工作，就像呢。这次我们来就是呢，为了能够做些宣传教育，使得中国的教育行业跟这个和这个移动业移动行业呢，能够更好的了解 p r o n o s 是一个什么样的组织。And we will we will be seeking out and、uh, looking to meet with key 
um, uh, decision makers in the leading Chinese companies uh, to educate and to engage with them one on one. 另外呢，我们觉得呢，第二个重大的步骤呢，就是我们要寻找到这些领先型的这个中国的这个公司，以及呢他们当中的这个决策者，能够呢使得呢他们更好的对我们的这些 API 的标准更好的了解，能够一对一的这样的来跟他们进行对话。And I will finish perhaps by making a comment. Chinese companies, if and when they decide to join Kronos, they will be very welcome into the Kronos family. 呃，最后呢，我代表 Kronos 呢还要做一个表达。那么就是说，任何中公司只要想参与到这个 Kronos 的这样这样一个规范的这个制定的过程当中，那么他们都是会非常受欢迎的。啊、呃，我是通信产业报的记者，我有两个问题。就首先是 Kronos 从那个两千年开始到现在就发展了一百多个会员嘛，我想问一下，就是而且基本上都是比较顶尖的这种大公司。就是 Kronos 在选择会员的时候有一个什么样的这种选择标准？第二个就是，嗯，刚刚提到就是已经制定了十五项这种标准，就是下一步的话会有一会有一个什么样的这种标准的制定计划？谢谢。So I'm a journalist from the uh the telecommunication industry uh journal, and uh, I have uh two questions. One is that uh, from your presentation, I uh, learned that uh, since uh, the year 2000, you have uh, uh, attracted and uh, uh, you have attracted uh, more than uh, 100 uh, members already, and uh, they are mostly top uh, member companies uh, in this industry. So, do you have a selection criteria in place? So, this is a question number one. Also, you have uh, already uh, 15 standards already. Uh, for API. So what's the next step? So what, what kind of more uh, API standards are you going to release? Two good questions. So the first question is easy. We don't have a selection criteria. It's important that Kronos is open to any company in the international market that wishes to join. There is no barrier to any company who wants to join Kronos and participate in the standardization process. We are an open organization, um, open to any company. Oh. 第一个问题很好回答了。第一个就是我们没有一个筛选的标准，我们必须是 Kronos Group 呢，必须是对全球的这个市场开放，不对任何国公司呢设置障碍。任何要希望参与的组织呢都可以参与，啊，必须是做到彻底的开放才可以。And the second question is a good question too. The the future projects that Kronos undertakes will be suggested and needed and required by the membership. Kronos does not have an agenda. Kronos is an organization where the member companies progress the standards that they need for their business needs. But I think there will be, again, two main threads. All of the most important APIs going forward will evolve. The graphics APIs will become more sophisticated. The compute APIs will become more flexible. But then there are also new areas that we haven't started standardizing yet. And for the telecoms industry, for example, how do we communicate 3D data and 3D models across a network? is a vital uh, standard that hasn't yet been widely adopted in the industry, and perhaps Kronos can play a role there. But there are many other opportunities to solve business needs in the future. I think the future of the future is a API. We think there are two main points. The first one I said is that the most important API of the future is related to the computer process. 那么分跟图形处理有关系，或者是跟这个呃这个并行计算啊，这个多重计算、平行计算有关系。
那么在这个图形处理方面的 API 呢，我们未来呢看到呢会复杂化，会得到进一步的增强啊，它的 API 的复杂性呢会得到进一步的增强。那么在这个 CL 方面呢，也就是这个计算的这个计算平行计算用的这个 API 方面呢，这个灵活性会得到进一步的增强。我们也看到了另外一个机会，这是两大领域了。第三个领域呢，我们就觉得从电信业来讲呢，就是3 D 数据如何在这个网络当中。获得呢更好的这个沟通啊，网络当中获和获得如何的分享？那么这方面呢，呃是还没有呢，呃这个有就是三 D 数据在网络当中的共享啊，跟这个传播啊沟通，现在还没有采用什么样的标准？那么这也是一个非常好的，我们未来呢开发新的 API 的一个机会。当然还有其他的一些机会，主要呢都是解决我们成员公司面对的问题的。嗯，你好，我是那个来自计算机世界的记者。嗯，我有那个两个问题。第一个问题就是说，呃，目前在中国这个其实流传着一句话，就是一流企业是做标准，二流企业是做市场，三流企业是做产品。其实我们刚才就是 c r o s e 提出那两个方面的，一个是教育，我们知道中国的教育非常穷，而且这个标准各方面都是由政府主导的。嗯、呃，我觉得这个难度是非常大。第二个是通信行业，通信行业我们知道通信是从西方过来的，它的标准各方面都是由欧洲。和西方所控制的，而而 c r o s e 如果在中国这个做标准的话，可能这成员发展可能是比较困难的。嗯，这是第一个问题。嗯，第二个问题就是说，刚才我听到就是加入我们的会员是需要加交一万美元的那个会费，然后他的产品就是呃挂在我们那个网页上，然后进行测试。但是如果说我们的产品是价格违约或者测试不合格，嗯，我们这个。如何对待就是我们这个成员，嗯，他这种产品，我们是帮助他通过，还是就是让他进行完善？就是这个具体就是有什么样的一个标准？啊、嗯，我有这两个问题，谢谢。I'm a journalist from a journal which is called PC World, and two questions. One is that in China nowadays, people know a very popular saying, which says. If you are an enterprise of the world class, then you will be、uh, very much focused. You will be very much committed to standardization. And、uh, if you are second class、uh, company, then you will be focused to marketing. If、uh, you are a third class company, then you are you will be on,、uh, totally focused on making products. And uh, uh, we know that the Kronos in your next steps regarding your plan、uh, in China. You have、uh, two things、uh, to do、uh, uh, on your agenda. One is education, and in China we have got. I have to admit that we have very poor education. And uh, regarding uh, standards in education, it's、uh, quite often defined or decided by the government. And、uh, so this, I think, would、uh, constitute a problem for Kronos in promoting education or kite in China. So this is uh, my uh, first uh, my concern, or also my question. How are we going to address this、uh, problem? Regarding uh, uh, the uh, telecommunication industry,、uh, because the telecommunication was、uh, started from the West, and、uh, therefore lots of、uh, standards were from the West, mainly from Europe, and so on. And therefore, I think this fact also constitutes、uh, a problem in developing or attracting members. From the telecommunication industry, and、uh, second question or third question is that、uh, you you said in your presentation that ten、uh, thousand U.S. dollars is needed as a membership fee before a company can join, and、uh, and you also said that、uh, the company have to run uh, uh, the conformance uh, tests, uh, and、uh, the results has to be uh, uh, released uh, on your website. What if they fail this kind of uh, uh, the, this kind of、uh, conformance tests?、Uh, I, how are you going to deal with these kind of companies or their products? Are you going to help them to improve so that their products can pass the、uh, the conformance tests or what? So what's the strategy? Okay. Okay. See if I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> so the first question was around education and. Uh, the, the key thing to、uh, understand about the Kite Initiative is that we are not、uh, trying to educate ourselves. We are trying to assist the educational community. You can you can understand that if you're a professor in a university,、uh, 
um, and Kronos delivers a 700-page specification, how is a professor in a university meant to quickly assimilate that information and teach a class? We don't want to teach, we want to help the teachers. 简称叫KITE,它不是说我们直接要进来来担负起这样一个教育的任务。我们这个KITE项目实际上目标是要帮助中国社区,使得教育者能够用我们的这个规范文件去进行教育。也就是说我们可能会把我们的规范文件,比如
。而 Pronos 如果参与到我们的这个标准制定当中呢，就能够避免了。Even DVD 标准制作当中的，当时呢，中国遇到的一些困难，因为我们的标准呢，呃，我们的这个成员的，我们这个过程的参与呢，呃，我们的这个标准呢，制定出来以后是免费的，是没有使用费，没有版税，因此的话呢，呃，你没有任何的这种说知识产权需要这个规避这样的一个问题，我们是开放的，使得呢，你作为一家公司来说呢，你的声音就能够呢，这个在我们的这个标准的制定过程当中能够被倾听，而且呢。中国公司的这些他们的这个需求呢，也能够通过我们的标准呢反映出来。And the third question was about、uh, the adoption program. So,、uh, Kronos, we try very hard to keep the costs and the fees as low as possible to encourage and enable any company to be able to afford to participate. Ten thousand dollars is A very low fee.、Um, when you compare to the cost of developing a product, ten thousand dollars is a very small fee. We need it to cover our costs, but no more. 那么第三个问题呢，实际上是关于呢，就是采用我们的标准的，就是采用我们的这个采用、呃、采用我们的标准的这样的一个流程的这个一些要求。呃，首先来说呢，就是说采用我们的标准的这个成本跟费用。我们尽可能是做到最低，使得各个公司呢，它都能够参与进来。那么一万美元呢，相比你自己去研发一个产品的话，从头一切都从头做起的话，呃，这个成本来说呢，这个一万美元是非常非常的低的。呃，那么因此的话呢，呃，我们通过呢这种低的这个收费啊、呃，使得呢，呃，大家都能够参与。但是我们本身呢，也需要一点点的收费，因为我们要做很多的事情，我们我我们我们有很多活动，很多事情要做。So, 但是我们只收我们所需要的那么一点点。And just to clarify, the you don't have to be a member to adopt the the membership and the adopters program. They they are separate. You can adopt without being a member、uh, if you wish. 另外，我要做个澄清，就是说你采用我们的这个 API 的标准，跟你成为我们的会员呢是两码事。就是说你采用我们的规范，采用我们的标准呢，完全可以是非成员的情况下也可以采用。啊，不见得非要是成员，就是说你参加作为成员，还有这个采用标准是两个不两两两件不同的事情。But we normally find that companies that are implementing kernel specifications find it worthwhile to be members because then they have access to all of the information that their competitors have access to, and they're not at a disadvantage, and they're not at a timing disadvantage. They get the information at the same time as everybody else. 但是我们也发现一个事实，就是说呢，凡是采用了这个我 c r o n o s API 的标准的这些公司呢，呃，他们在实施过程当中都会意识到呢，作为我们的成员是非常有利的。这样的话呢，是他使得他们可以呢尽早的获得这套规范的信息。那么相比他们的竞争对手来说呢，他们就不会落后于竞争对手，不把自己的这个置于一个不利的地位。呃，那么就是说呢，在获得这些信息啊，这个规范的信息上，这个在获得这些信息的这个时间上来说呢，他们不会输输给这个竞争对手啊，这因此的话非常重要。And、we found when people that are submitting results, if they have issues, it's surprising the working group will often provide pointers to what is wrong.、Um, so、um, I've seen competitors help other. Competitors fix their problem with performance results. 嗯，还有你说呢，就是说的，在进行呢这个复合型测试的时候呢，需要这个把这个复合型测试的这个结果啊挂在 Cronos 的网站上。呃，那么就是说的，如果说是没有通过复合型测试，我们是一个什么样的做法？我们看到我们的工作组呢，都是非常乐于助人的。当看到一个呃公司，他在这个实施我们的标准的时候呢，复合型测试没有通过。那么这些专家呢，工作组专家都会很快的指出他哪些方面是个弱项，为什么没有通过。那么甚至呢，我可以看到，我还会看，我还看到过这个竞争对手公司啊，也会帮助呢另外的跟他形成竞争态势的公司呢，他们的在这个呃标准这这个符合性测试当中哪些不过关，有哪些弱项啊、呃，就这种情形我也看到。嗯，啊啊 ，My name is Wang Yongbei. I'm from Korea. I think my company is. Chinese, the smallest 
one of the smallest companies in Thomas Group, I think you questioned about three steps of uh, company development. Uh, I think the, the, my company is, is a good example of that. Uh, we developed our product with, with supporting standard. It makes dramatically uh, reduce the marketing fee because so everybody understand the open bridge, then we can go to, to someone who is searching for open bridge. So it is, I think, we can reduce one step to the marketing. We, we can dramatically reduce marketing. I think it is a good opportunity to small and tiny company can you know, buy the participating in Chrome School.我也来补充来做一个实例来讲一下就是我们呢可以算是来自韩国的一个非常小的公司可能是参加这个 获得了巨大的这个下降，因此的话呢，我们这么一小步，就是选择参加Kronos Group，为我们的市场营销的这个费用呢，呃，有了非常大的一个减少。那么因此的话呢，我想我们公司可以证明呢，小公司参加Kronos Group 呢，能够带来巨大的好处。你好，我是来自东京Stockholm记者，我想问你一个很直接的问题，就是您觉着。您最希望哪一个中国公司先加入到Kronos？您觉得它有这个能力加入Kronos？我的公司名字再说一下，你们那个媒体没？Do to be converted into a Chronos uh, uh, member. So do you have any target? Yeah, I, I have some. And you know, we said we're after um, chip companies. I mean, the one top of my mind yeah. is Huawei. Okay. And I, we, we want to engage with mobile phone OEMs. And the one top of my mind is ZTE. Okay. We're already number four in the world in terms of mobile phone shipments. And of course, the mobile carriers, the largest mobile carrier in China. The largest uh, mobile uh, carrier in in China. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, China. Huawei can answer your question. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. And also rocket ship. Rocket ship. Uh, I can give you an example. We are now hoping that some Chinese companies will join. First, join as a DP. Join as a DP. 首先我们是觉得一些顶尖的一些芯片公司那么首先是华为那么还有呢是像这个中兴啊这个ZTE啊他们的从他们的这个交付的这个产品在全球范围里面的已经在全球第四位了那么还有一些呢顶尖的这个
uh, in comparison, the newly uh, uh, the newly attracted uh, companies, the member company, could be small. So and uh, so in the R and D capabilities, there could be no comparison between between these two kinds. So maybe the large, long-standing companies would feel unfair if uh, one company went out. Uh, so how do you address this uh, problem? Second question is that uh, you mentioned that uh, the open standard, uh, one uh, good result is uh, to avoid uh, uh, the evil IP uh, royalty uh, fees. How do you discover uh, potential IP litigation uh, possibilities as an opportunity to develop uh, new APIs? Yeah, that's two, two very good questions. So, first of all, some of the longest serving members are small companies. There is actually, on average, I would say large and small companies are old and new. Um, and it's very interesting. Kronos, it always surprises me, actually. Kronos is very non-political. Um, you very rarely need to vote on specifications. The working groups typically work to consensus. Yeah, they work and they reach agreement. It doesn't matter whether a good engineer who has a good argument is from Intel or from Huan. If it's a good argument, it will it will persuade the other members of the working group. So the bottom line is we've never had a complaint for the large companies that the small companies get the same vote. 首先这里第一个问题来说呢我们的这个就较长期的会员啊长期会员来说不见得是大公司也有很多的小公司可以说这个大小公司呢呃有的是我们的老成员老成员里面也有大公司有小成员也有小公司那么新成员里面呢也有
that not talking about IP is the best way to deal with IP. Because the framework is fail-safe in that if no one mentions IP, then everyone is agreeing not to sue each other in the membership over conformance implementations. So again, it's surprising. It turns out that it's very rare that anyone ha uses the mechanism to carve out a patent and say, this is not going to be licensed. In the 10-year history of Kronos, with 15 APIs, many different versions, we've probably had less than a dozen patents ever mentioned in the whole history. And the working group you know, are able to steer you know, the, the specifications to respond appropriately. Um, but typically, again, it comes to the fact that the members understand that if we get a widely adopted standard, that's the way we can make most business. So normally, people don't try to play games with IP. 另外呢就是说Kronos组织呢 也不会呢是在别人呢进行这个符合性测试实施过程当中呢，去找机会去给对方呢提出，因为知识产权去提出这个起诉啊啊诉讼啊，呃不会啊，就是那么我们就是尽可能的使得这个IP啊不构成一个
but they are not formally engaged with Kronos. So they're not getting the IP protection because they are typically, and from memory, I think this is correct, but um, they, they're not adopters, so they're not getting the IP protection. And they're not participating in the standardization process, so they're not having a voice and a vote in how the specification develops for the next generation. So they are finding value, which is great, uh, in Kronos standards, but you know, their value would be much increased if they were to you know, formally engage in the processes that we've uh, defined. They would have IP protection and they would have voice. And the as John, it was as John was saying. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Did you? Have <laughs> 呃，首先来说呢，这个无论是中兴还是华为的话呢，他们的这个终端设备上呢，都是采用了 Chronos 的这个标准。呃，无论是中兴现在推出他们的手机啊，在他的手机里面呢，是有有这个 Chronos 的标准的 API。那么华为的这个它的这个芯片产品里面呢，也有啊这个 Chronos 的这个 API。呃，但是呢，他们不是一个正规的一个我们的规范的这个采用者。这是因为呢，呃，呃，这样的话呢，呃，他们就没有获得呢，就不会获得呢这个 IP 的就知识产权的这个保护。呃，另外呢，就他们也没有成为我们的成员的话呢，他们在规范的制定过程当中，他们就发不出他们的声音来。因此的话呢，当有下一代标准的下一个版本标准制定的时候呢，他们的需求、他们的需要就无法去呃呃反映出来。因此的话呢，他们已经看到了 Chronos 标准的重要性，看到了它的价值，呃呃，但是呢，他们没有这个正式的参与，没有正式的参与呢，一个呢就是没有知识产权保护，再一个就是他们的声音无法呢能够在这个规范的制定过程当中呢能够被倾听。And then to your second question,、uh, as、uh, Dr. Teddy was saying, the the overall cost of developing new product is significantly lower if you use open standards. As compared to trying to develop your whole specification and product yourself, so for two reasons: one is that the all the engineers have worked hard to make sure an API like OpenGL ES2 is very efficient in terms of space and power.、Um, and secondly,、uh, if it's an open standard, you will find many vendors that are used to supplying those components, and so you can get them at lower cost. 呃，关于对硬件要求还有这个最终成本是不是因为采用这个 Chronos 的标准会提升，我应该说呢，采用 Chronos 的标准呢，只会使你的这个产品的总体成本下降，这是因为我们的这个标准的开放性。呃，因为呢，它这个标准的开放性的话呢，就使得呢，相比来说，你自己呢，既要去研发产品，又要去写自己的规范，这个成本呢，比较低得多。而且呢 ，Chronos 的他的这个工作组的工程师呢，他们都是就是业界的顶尖他们的工作的效率也非常的高。那么在这个呃加速硬件方面，呃节电方面啊，还有这个空间的这个利用方面呢，他们都是有这个业界最先进的一些理念，呃，带来最大的这种益处。呃，这样的话也能节约你的成本。还有就是你采用了这个开放标准以后呢，就会有更多的供应商呢给你提供。是采用了 Chronos API 标准的这个零部件来给你，那么这样的话呢，你的采购范围会更大，这样的话呢，使得你的这个零部件的采购的这个成本呢也会降低。嗯，你、嗯、好，其实我这个应该并不算个问题，应该是算一个交流。呃，因为我更专更关注这个 PM 这个项目。你刚才说您会和把这个我们这个标准。嗯、呃，这这些东西，呃，给这个大学里的教授，那想问一下，嗯，就是我们现在和哪些大学有这个交流和沟通？然后另外另外就是说，我们这些培训项目如何进行？嗯，还有就是我可以给那个，啊，咱们提个意见，就是说我知道有一家，嗯，公司他是这个这个公司的发起者，他是在，呃，谷歌，然后。嗯，很多这个外国外的这个这个呃顶尖公司工作过，然后他之后拿这些公司他的培训的这个材料，或者是说嗯他顶尖的技术，然后拿到中国，然后再和这个中国的这个嗯政府部门，比如工信部
呃，就是做了一个申请，然后申请到了国家的基金，然后到中国来，嗯、呃、嗯、呃，组织了一个这个是嗯，就是国家承认的这么一个呃，也算是私营的这么一个教育机构，然后到各地去培训，然后到那个各个大学去招生。我觉得我们这个部门，他嗯、呃，这个部门也可以和他们去这些非。呃，非公有的这些这些培训机构去合作，然后这样的话，我们就是这个教育项目开的会更加顺利一点。谢谢。嗯。So this is uh, not uh, a question. This is uh, a comment and also a suggestion. I'm very interested in your uh, kite program. Uh, you mentioned uh, in your presentation that uh, you are going to take your API specifications to universities. To have the professors to teach, to assimilate the specifications, and to teach the uh, specifications. Uh, so, a question is: uh, Which universities uh, in China have you contacted? Uh, have you set or set up an uh, initial contact? Uh, and uh, secondly, how are the training going to be conducted? Uh, so, what's in your mind? How 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 the training class are going to be organized or conduct? The training is to get conducted. Yeah. And uh, thirdly, it's a suggestion. I know that uh, there is a private educational or training company who has uh, the the founder has got working experience with Google, mm -hmm. and uh, so he took back uh, from Google and other uh, international companies uh, some specifications back to China. He applied he applied for a fund uh, uh, from uh, MIT, the Ministry for uh, Information and Industries. Uh, of industries and IT technology, yes. and uh, as a result, he got the funding from the government. He started a private education or training company, and he is now recruiting students from different universities, and he is providing uh, courseware and uh, and, uh, and trainings. And uh, I think uh, this kind of private company can also be considered by uh, Kronos to be uh, your partner. Maybe that will make uh, your education or training in China more uh, smooth or fruitful. Yes, <coughs> that's exactly what we want. <laughs> so it would be great if you if you can share that contact. We would love to um, talk to them. But Kronos does not want to get into the business of teaching courses. We want to find partners in academia and commercial companies uh, that are undertaking training to make sure that we are playing our part in just making sure the information and the support is there for the companies that want to teach about Kronos APIs. A Japanese company, DMP, yeah. is doing such a thing in Japan. So, I'm going to give you a comment. I'm going to thank you. If you can take your company to the Chinese company, 私人的这个培训公司的这个创始人的这个联系方式给我们留下的话，我们很乐意去跟他谈合作。呃，刚才我也讲了，我们不是要直接进入教学的环节，我们是要寻求合作伙伴，包括学术界的、商界的。我们提供我们的规范、呃文件，我们我们提供支持。呃，但是我们是希望这些学术团体啊，或者是教育机构啊，或者是商业团体去去交手。呃，所以我们对这种合作伙伴的建立是非常的感兴趣。呃呃 ，John 呃 Paddy 呢讲到这个日本呢有一家公司叫 DMP 啊，就是已经成了这个 c r o n o s 的这样一个合作伙伴，在日本来执行了他的这个 Kite 的项目。Yes. So that's a great um a model. Um, but also we also want to talk to universities. We actually uh, are getting a developer at the university. At Tsinghua University tomorrow, mm -hmm. and we're going to be talking to the professors at Tsinghua University to begin the conversation about how to roll out kite in China. We're just starting that process, uh, but we're very interested in any uh, feedback um, that here or at the universities that we're beginning to talk to. Additionally, besides DMP, which is a training company. Um, we have academic members such as University of Western Australia. They are also teaching courses. So we recognize that from university to uh, short-term training course level, Kronos APIs are being taught all over the world. And our goal is to help 
standardize the quality. DNP or DMP? DNP. DNP, yes. Uh, 另外呢，这个日本的这个 DMP 呢，它讲呢就是说，呃，首先来说是呃，成为呢 Pronos 的这个在这个培训上的合作的一个非常好的一个典范。呃，再一个就是 DMP 呢也，它是也强调跟这个跟比如说澳大利亚的正规的大学去进行合作，呃，也包括一些短训啊这个机构啊短期培训机构去进行合作，就是正规学术团体也好。短期培训的这种商业团体也好，他们都很注重去来进行合作。那么 DNP 呢，它也是就是说的，在各家合作的时候呢，它主要关注的就是维持这个培训的一个质量啊、呃。但是它各方呢都是很欢迎的。呃，刚才呢这个呃总裁先生呢呃讲呢 ，Travis 呃 Travis 先生讲呢，明天呢我们将会在清华大学搞一个叫开发者大学的一个试验班，一个一个一个一个开幕日。呃，那么就是要让中国的教授啊，中国的学生啊，啊，了解我们这样一个开放者大学的这样一个呃一个教学的内容，然后呢，也希望呢，听一听教授的一个反馈，看看怎么样能跟他们合作，使得这个对话呢能够持续下去，也乐意呢大家提一些意见，宝贵意见。One last comment, I think this is an opportunity for commercial companies that wish to teach. There's a lot of material. And it's relevant to the industry in terms of specifications. This is for the right company. This is a big opportunity. 对于这个呃商界的这个培训机构来说呢，我觉得这是一个非常好的呃合作机会，因为我们能够提供很多的材料，很丰富的材料。而且呢，这些材料、这些规范来说，对于业界是非常需要的。呃，因此的话呢，如果是对这个商业培训感兴趣的话呢，我觉得应该是面对着一个非常好的合作机会。你所说的那个经过，它是呃以那个北航作为中北京航空很大学为背景的，然后他们是主要是做那个移动互联网开发，还有云算培训，然后他们培训的是那个硕士学历，然后也是国家正规承认的，所以我觉得嗯是一块这